Hello, welcome to today's video. Thank you for clicking. Today we're going to start talking about estimating a population parameter. Specifically, we'll be talking about a confidence interval. So what does a confidence interval do? I'm sure many of you have actually seen them or read about them in some research paper, or you can even see a confidence interval on the news. But essentially, it's just like it sounds. You're going to create an interval for your parameter of interest. So the generic formula for a confidence interval is to take some point estimate, and we'll talk about what that is in a minute, and you're going to add and subtract something called a margin of error. So you add and subtract some margin of error. So essentially what happens is you will get a lower bound and you'll end with an upper bound. So sometimes people will call it a lower limit or you could call it an upper limit or an upper bound. Essentially, those are the same thing. And because of the format of the confidence interval, you'll always have your point estimate exactly in the middle. So once you calculate it, the point estimate will be exactly in the center. Because what you do is take that measurement, that margin of error measurement, and you subtract one, and this is usually shortened to ME, so I have to write that out again. You subtract the margin of error from your point estimate to get to your lower limit, or you add a margin of error to your point estimate to get to your upper limit or your upper bound. So depending on the type of data that you're creating a confidence interval for, the point estimate can change. Essentially, it's that sample estimate that you're using to estimate the parameter you're creating an interval for. Now, most of the time with confidence intervals, not most of the time, all of the time, um, you will have what's called a confidence level. So confidence level. Now the interval, this interval, is going to be these two numbers. You've got an upper bound and a lower bound, or an upper limit and a lower limit. A confidence level is one number, and it's going to be how confident you are in the method that you used. So the pretty universal confidence level, 95%. A lot of times if you see a confidence interval, it's 95%. But it could be 99%, it could be 90%. You can have a variety of confidence levels, but realize that these are not the same thing. So an interval, interval has to be two numbers because it's an interval. A confidence level is how confident or the level of confidence you have in the procedure that you used. So point estimate and margin of error is going to vary based on the type of data that you have. And so in future videos, we'll start to make these point estimates and margins of error more specific to the data that we're using to calculate an interval for our parameter. But for right now, those are the basic terminologies. We have a confidence interval that will create a lower and upper bound. We'll have a confidence level that talks about how confident you are, and that's one number and it's a percentage. Then the generic formula is to take a point estimate and add and subtract some margin of error. And this is going to be dealing with that level of variability or that sampling variability that we know exists in our data. So the margin of error is giving ourselves some room for error. And once you calculate that, this is ultimately what you have. You have an upper bound and lower bound, so an interval, and you're hoping your parameter is contained somewhere within that interval. So in future videos, we'll look at examples. See you then.